Hey, everybody. It's been a great day, right? And we're in the home stretch now. So I'd love to invite anyone who would like and who feels comfortable participating to do a little exercise with me. If you'd like, please stand up. Thank you. So stay standing if you remember this moment. About, six, about 16 years ago, the pop when the tech bubble burst. If you remember this time, please stay standing. If not, please be comfortable and have a seat. Going back a few more years to around 1991, when this fellow, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, slid a disk into a Next machine in, at CERN, double-clicked, and launched a thing we now call the World Wide Web. If you remember that change, please stay standing. Otherwise, have a seat. Now, what about this? This moment in 1984, where the audacity of the Macintosh, not to mention its creator, Steve, changed the world. If you remember 1984, please stay standing. Otherwise, have a seat. In 1976, the year I graduated from high school, America was introduced to a word we'd never heard before. It was called energy independence. It changed the way we thought about resources, fuel, power, consumption, and certainly the way we drove our cars. If you remember the sorry no gas sign, please stay standing. Otherwise, have a seat. 1969. We landed on the moon. Have a seat if you don't remember that moment. And look, we're thinning out. In 1960, you know, there was a time when someone would get the mainframe to whir and lights of entire buildings or even entire cities would go down. Please stay standing only if you remember those days. So look at who remains standing. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much. My name's Ellen Leantz, and I'm talking with you today about experience diversity and the importance of all we learn and all we see in the rearview mirrors as we look back. And you know, the game of life is long. And I've found that the experiences we collect as we play this game tend to bring us lessons we couldn't get anywhere else. In fact, maybe some of us who remain standing will know that it almost feels magically designed sometimes, how we get exactly the experiences and lessons that we need to move through our lives, to continue to contribute for all of the years that we work, all of the years that we are part of communities, all of the years we try to create something bigger and better with our lives. And yet there's this thing in tech that says only certain types of mystical creatures, very rare ones, have these gifts to contribute, have a way to pay it forward and add value to the world of tech. Only a few have what it takes to fly. Young people are simply smarter, said a famed tech leader. He regrets it now. But even today, we see things like a call for speakers, for veterans of the tech industry, Veterans of the tech industry means people more than 35 years old. I want to mention to you that 35 years is exactly how many years I've worked in this world of tech. Now, every year has taught me something different. And year by year, I found satisfaction building upon each ring, each ripple that has come my way simply through the time and through the experience of working in this industry. Yet, we tech people think that growth stops at a certain age. It gets chopped down when we hit a certain point in our time or our career. And this really bothers me. It bothers me for two reasons. First of all, the lessons, the network, the perspective, the insights of the decades give me strength I couldn't have gotten in any other way. But it bothers me for a bigger reason. And that is because for those of you who sat down early in this talk, you are facing the most powerful, the most contributory, the most insightful and badass years of your career. And yet you're being told when you turn X and that number 
could be 35, it could be 30 I've seen, it could be 40. When you hit that, you have nothing more to deliver. If you remember one thing from this talk today, please make it this. That is not true. And if we fall into that belief system, we do ourselves a disservice and we lose something precious that allows us and our industry to thrive. Look to nature, different types of trees, different ages and stages of trees. That's what makes an ecosystem strong. And a diverse ecosystem of experiences, life lessons, and cycles of change, that's the ecosystem we need to help tech thrive. Yet, there's an elephant in the room. While the median age of workers in the United States is 42, the median age in tech is 28. Reportedly at Google, it's 26. And in many startups, it's much lower than that. How does this reality bias the priorities and experiences we develop in tech? How does it change the way we view our audiences and the impact that we wish to create with them? Now, once upon a time, I had all the ideas, spirit, and energy. As a fledgling Apple employee back in 1981, I faced the world with the enthusiasm and experience of younger leaders today. And it was thrilling. I could take leaps of faith and enjoy the success, those rare times when they actually landed where they should. But I didn't have the grit, the tenacity, the perspective, the road rash, and the school of hard knocks wisdom that I have today. Nor did I know the satisfaction I could find in sharing it with the next wave of rising leaders. Now, I'm not alone. This is one of my sheroes, Francine Hardaway. Does anyone here in this room happen to know or follow Francine? Oh, John, good. <laughs> well, some of you might consider changing that for a unique perspective on inclusion and innovation. Francine brings more than four decades of experience growing tech companies to her leadership as a coach and startup um, advisor. And again, as I said, you can follow her on Francine, and I'm shouting her out right now. But yet voices like Francine's, with all the brilliance they bring, and even voices like my own, are often discounted in tech because of our bias toward youth. Now, at 58 years young, I've never felt more energized, more passionate, more prepared, or more ready to contribute to this amazing world of tech than I do today. And I want to share the how-tos, the twists and turns of the rows, in ways that make the navigation easy, easier for this next wave of rising stars. And the view in the rearview mirror gives me a unique perspective I could have only got through this long drive I've been on since 1981. And it gives me perspective in ways that bring value I couldn't have earned any other way. These maps are confusing. So many of us in tech face questions that can't be answered, ideas that we don't even know will ever become real or not, risks and twists and turns. The perspective of people who've driven these maps before is invaluable in building our courage, our confidence, and our contribution as we build the tech industry of tomorrow. Like those trees in the forest, and this is that moment where the wrong slide is here, but this is what I want the road to look like rather than the twists and turns that I would have seen if I hadn't had people who helped guide me in this direction. We're stronger together. This is something that's been true since the dawn of time. And when we bring together different voices, different strengths, we have something we can't get when we're in that echo chamber of only one type of thinker. In every human society since the dawn of time, we've called on our elders to enrich us, to empower us, and to drive the rising generation of leaders forward to their next level of achievement. Now, we are stronger together. And although an older hand might look different than the hands we see in this image here, it would bring a strength and support across the full stack that can't be had in any other way. 
and we benefit from all of that diversity. Consider the advantage you could gain by bringing experience diversity from a range of ages, experience, and stages to your work as you build your path to success. Thank you, and I look forward to our panel discussion. Thank you.